Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Youssef Alexander, who is literally just up the road in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Youssef? I'm doing excellent. How are you? Excellent. Very good. And Youssef is the co-founder of REAP, um, REAP uh, Capital. You, uh, he brings over 20 years of experience in successful development of commercial and residential assets. And uh, Youssef, you also have a lot of philanthropic concerns, uh, child, early childhood literacy, financial literacy for adults. You've written the, the book Deal by Deal, A Practical Guide to Real Estate Investing. Um, so first of all, let's let's just jump into it. So um, the, your company, uh, Reap, uh, just tell me a little bit about how that came about, and then how you also brought a purpose a, a, a purpose to it, and and how do you you call it a purpose driven and uh, company. Okay, well, uh, the Reap is an acronym, and of course, mm -hmm. it's kind of a play on words it's real estate asset partners and real estate asset partners was is the you know kind of a updated iteration of how i show up in the commercial real estate multifamily real estate and moreover working class real estate space now that didn't start it didn't start that way it started you know 20 some odd years ago 25 years ago or so I actually got my, my ucla shirt on when i graduated ucla in 1996 and economics. And uh, basically, there was, a, I wouldn't say a perfect storm, but there was a storm. And it was a, uh, you know, a, a recession and a, and a financial um, cycle happening that really took its toll on blighted areas. And those blighted mm -hmm. areas were neglected before the, um, the, the cycle. And then during the cycle, they became even more um, neglected and, 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 and left to vanquish. So um, uh, languish, I'm sorry, left to languish. And then, and what happened is um, my mentor, uh, you know, a, a gentleman, he was, uh, he, he showed me how to reposition properties, buy and sell properties, but in a, in a very specific market. So I took that expertise and, and you know, thousands of properties later, I um, cut my teeth in, a, in an area that I, I'm still in today, which is working class real estate. Mm -hmm. But to make a long story short, once I got that experience, I decided to start a company, um, you know, boutique, get a boutique um, group of investors and then scale that operation to apartment buildings, multifamily, commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. And then that um, took its trajectory to what I'm involved in today, which is, you know, larger larger properties, as well as, you know, I do do some small properties every now and then it depends. I'm just a junkie when it comes to deals. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sometimes do, do other, other sized projects as well. So what was the opportunity then, as you said, in, in working class or neglected areas, what, what were you able to do in terms of with your mentor, in terms of repositioning these properties and actually being able to build a business out of it? Well, what I was able to do is, um, you know, give, a, a prideful living environment. You know, what I found out over the years is whatever demographic that exists in the market, in the uh, real estate market, there's a pride of ownership, a pride of living that, that, um, that occurs. And sometimes, you know, there's kind of a sacrilegious word called paint and carpet. That means someone is going to go in somewhere and just kind of throw some stuff up and think that that's going to add value to it. That doesn't, that, that, that's a bad term in, 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 in my DNA. And what I've found is, you know, truly adding value, finding value and adding value and delivering that value will deliver a, you know, uh, um, a, an, an abundant exchange, meaning, you know, the, the return on the investment will be there. And also the, the community will be involved in, and we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. And also mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the pride of, of, of living, the residents will also have a, an abundant exchange as well. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing that you say there about the you know the pride of living because obviously sometimes I think people who are unfamiliar with um, you know blighted areas or areas that have been through economic hardship and all of that and they just assume that there is no pride of ownership just because the areas are blighted, uh, but they don't realize that it's something that everybody has. It just needs to be you know unlocked in the right way. 
absolutely. And then there's so many, so many different layers and so many different, um, um, you know, uh, experiences that that can happen, whether it be transportation, education, um, you know, I happen to, you know, have my, my expertise in, in real estate and, and working class real estate. And, you know, over the pandemic, people really realized how much, how important that is to the, to mm -hmm. the economy, to the average family and to the average person, because, mm -hmm. you know, you spend most of your time there. And then, you know, there's just so many different layers and levels of, of experience in that space, whether it be working from home, teaching your children from home, you know, um, having your sanctuary to, to recuperate and, and, and go out in the world and do your thing. So yeah, right now is, you know, people realize that, but I kind of realized that maybe you know, almost 30 years ago. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think people have uh, have awoken have awoken to that. So, what what are some of the uh, what are some of the uh, success stories that you have had? Oh man, I mean, so well, we can talk about success stories as far as like you know, you know, four or five times you know expected profit on a property. Yeah, that's an a success story. Mm -hmm. But one of one one that comes to mind what is a um, a property that. Um, I bought in North Carolina, it was a 50 unit building and it was near a place called Bragg Air Force Base. So when I, when I, when I got, when I bought the place, when we bought the place, it was called the King George apartment complex or King Henry or some, some kind of biblical name. But I guess they put that biblical name in there because they were trying to exercise the devil out of the, <laughs> out of the air. It was literally, I mean, it was just running. It was, it was, it was so bad. It was so bad run down. And, and, you know, you, you had working class families, but you also had, you know, soldiers there from the air force base. You had transient people. It's just the population and the population wasn't bad. It's just the, the way that the property was treated. And the success story was when I went in there, I actually thought I bit off more than I can chew, but um, you know, I had some secret sauce as far as added value play. And I really leaned into that property and um, we, we, you know, we did very, very, very well. That was one of the smaller, but one of the beginning um, projects that, that we turned around. And the success story was literally maybe 18, maybe two years after we bought the property. Um, you know, when we bought it, people were burning rubber in the parking lot and, you know, having muscle car races mm -hmm. and, whatever. And we, you know, put some speed bumps and some pedestrian roads up. And then those same, the same population, you see the guy dressed nice with his new wife and in a, in a baby stroller, you know, going down the sidewalk. And I mean, you just smile ear, you pull up at the property, and you just smile ear to ear. The guy's going to get his mail with a baby carriage and his wife, his mm -hmm. new wife, as, as opposed to, you know, the guy doing a motorcycle with a wheelie, doing a wheelie with a motorcycle down the, 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 the same yeah. driveway. And and it seems to me that uh, that to be able to achieve something like that, it it as you said, I mean, it's it's some it's some simple things that you did. It's just to take a different look at it and say, okay, how can we remove some of the things that are going on to make it more conducive to you know families and everybody can share this this space. Uh, so I mean, it seems to me that you know, perhaps there are more opportunities like this, but people don't see it probably in the way that you see it. They don't see that there's actually simple things that could be fixed that could have an outsized uh, impact. Yeah, I, John, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, over you know, my years of experience, it's just, you know, the way people see the world. You know, there's business owners that see the world in a commoditized, you know, version of, of what they've learned. And then they kind of, you know, stencil that commoditized, you know, version onto their, their business, their portfolio. There's also people that are, you know, uh, you know, uh, they have the technology base and then they, they kind mm -hmm. of see the world as a technology, you know, kind of platform. And then they bring that to their business portfolio. I see the world in a blended way because, you know, fortunately, you know, I grew up in blighted areas. I grew up in the eighties and in, in South central Los Angeles. So, you know, all of the nostalgia yeah. and the good and bad and in between that came with that, that environment allowed me to kind of um, clock into my, my bones. What would be good about a good, uh, this, a situation like this. And then, so, you know, from, you know, those, that blended, you know, outlook of personal experience, 
academic, commoditized technology, you know, you, you say, hey, how can I, how can I put this into this business project to, to squeeze as much benefit as possible? Yeah, because obviously uh, it has to be sustained. It has to be able to sustain itself. And, uh, and and so, you know, whatever you do to change these places, you know, it needs to be something that can be sustained over time. But obviously uh, this, is, this has been a hugely um, or has hugely informed your sense of phil um, philanthropy and the giving back and the purpose driven. So talk to me a little bit yeah. more about that, the purpose driven aspect and the, phil the philanthropy. Well, purpose driven um, is 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 just you know kind of a a a small way to explain a large vision. Mm -hmm. Purpose driven in 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 real estate for me and how I would you know build my business is I would like to have the inhabitants, the residents, the occupants, the clients. I would like to connect them to the economy collect them, you know, transportation wise, digitally. Uh, and also, as you, you kind of mentioned earlier, if there's some type, type of, uh, you know, literacy aspect that can be connected. So that's my purpose. You know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not Elon Musk. I don't, I don't make electric cars and solar panels. So that's how he, you know, shows up and, and maybe his population is, is, you know, that's, that's what his purpose is. But my purpose is, I know that there's a, a financial literacy gap. I know there, there's, there's a childhood literacy gap. And, you know, fortunately, I can see it boots on the ground, hands on at some of the, you know, uh, locations that I'm involved in, I can just see it. So it's easier for me to see and then also to to meet the needs of where they are, whether it be a backpack giveaway, whether it be um, a book giveaway, whether it be a, um, an after school program that we can, you know, put at the at the business center there. So those are, you know, purpose driven is for my um, my. Um, vantage point, which is childhood literacy, financial literacy, and connecting my, the population to the economy. And, you know, any way I can, any way I can collaborate, any, you know, any smart minds that want to add to that, we, we, we welcome it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great point you make there, because I think it's something that people often overlook. And they, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, people who've, who have come from more fortunate circumstances, maybe they look at you know, they look at areas like that and they don't see, you know, they wonder why people can't be successful or do all the things, but they don't see the missing pieces that you just talked about there, the connection to the economy. So you said it's one, it's one thing to give somebody a place to live, but if you, I mean, I know it from my own, like homeland in Ireland, um, in Dublin, you know, they've moved a lot of people out of inner city and moved them out to these, you know, purpose-built estates on the outskirts of the city, but they put no amenities good transport no nothing in there no so what do they so John, what do they become yeah, yeah exactly so basically what you want to do and you know this probably more than a lot of the listeners is you know there's a certain uh, uh, resources that are needed and those mm -hmm. resources and they're very basic but once those basic resources are are available then you see a broader stroke of a, an area a population you know a generation they start to move laterally through the the society you know, usually upwardly, you know, versus mm -hmm. just laterally. So, you know, you give them connectivity to uh, literacy, financial literacy, uh, you know, uh, academic literacy, you give them, you don't know, put a food desert, a lot of places that I've had properties in, John, I'm you, food desert, like there is no right. healthy food around. I mean, yeah. I would be there all the time, you know, and I'm getting hungry, or, I, you know, my crew, or I'm feeding people, I'm having investors coming, I'm like, where, where, where's the eat? Well, you know, there's a there's a, a Mickey D's, no, no bad yeah. talk about Mickey. There's a, you know, a, a, ch a chicken, kitchen, chicken, whatever, popping chicken. And it, that's about it. And a couple of liquor stores and there's no Whole Foods and no Trader Joe's, <laughs> no yeah. sprouts. You know what I mean? So where are you going to get some fresh veggies and some and some some good almond milk or something? There, There is none. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. And I think people often overlook that and then they wonder, like, you know, there's obviously there's a lot of. Uh, you know, there's a lot of problems that come along with poverty, like health problems and all oh of that goodness. and people. And and you just pointed out like a very, a very simple thing that's part of the problem is that there are not the options. You know, it's it 
if if you want to live a healthy lifestyle, you know, you've got to give people access to, as you said, to healthy food, to places, to, you know, healthy environment, access to places where they can exercise or whatever. So it's very easy to often just to say, oh, my goodness, like what's going on over there? Instead of saying, no, you need to look a little bit more below the surface and realize that it's because the opportunities aren't there. Yeah. See, something that you said that, that I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot of people don't look at is what needs to happen, not what is happening, what, mm -hmm. what is needed there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's the thing is, you know, you've got to you've got to look below the surface. And the other thing that you, you know, you mentioned that you do a lot of is, is uh, interest in is childhood literacy. And I think that's another key thing that people often overlook because um, reading, you know, literacy is the only predictor of success when somebody is a child. Absolutely. I mean, the numbers, you know, show themselves the trajectory of a literate child and the word gap of a child that isn't, you know, uh, up to levels of, of certain level of literacy. I mean, it's night and day, you know, yeah. I don't make the numbers. I just, I happen to, you know, get, get into those studies and, and see a couple things. I'm actually on the board of a, of a school. And um, so now I get access to a little bit more of, you know, what, what those numbers are and how, how to change them in different ways. But yeah, childhood literacy is, very 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 important you know if you yeah. can spell you can read you can access different words you can articulate an idea then you can ask you can you understand what a food desert is and what what a, you know a, a place of choice is so then once you know the difference between the two you can kind of have some advocacy to get that done in your own life yeah no that's a, that's a, that's a fantastic point and and, and as i said again it's, it's something that people often overlook because or don't understand because, uh, you know, especially in, 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 you know, less privileged circumstances, you know, they think, well, yeah, it's great. You give somebody a book, but if they've no, if they have no comfortable place to be able to read it, if they've no space, if they don't have distractions around, if they don't have somebody encouraging them um, and, and the person, they may have nobody encouraging them just because the other people are so busy just trying to put food on the table or whatever, that it's not as simple it's, it's not as simple as just like applying yourself. You have to have the circumstances and the environment for it too. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Yeah. So, um, uh, so from a, from a um, purely commercial point of view, then obviously um, you've seen opportunities to help people and, and to help grow people, but also um, good opportunities for return on investment. And, and I think that's another thing. And I think that's important for people to understand too, because it's not like you're just going into areas and just turning around buildings and that just to be charitable. I mean, you're doing it to, you know, there's a good, there's a good economic Absolutely. return on it as well as a return for the people, which is the best yeah, of both I mean, worlds. Listen, you know what? The, the, the bottom line is I'm a, I'm a, a wizard at, you know, the alchemy of, of, of sourcing deals and, and, you know, you know, making those deals look good on paper that, that, that's, a one because that works for everybody. You know who wants a mm -hmm. who wants a, a deal to go bust, and then that area becomes not only blighted, but then it becomes you know uh, an eye store because it, you know something else is is going on that shouldn't have been going on, like you know over leveraged you know property or or yeah. you know whatever else things that happen in in, in a in a busted um situation. So you know you look for the drivers, the things that you you know population and and, and income and. But the funny thing about it, John, is those, they're there. It's not even that difficult to see. It's more of like a choice situation. I mean, because money follows a lot of different things. Sometimes it's a political narrative. Sometimes it's yeah. a cyclical narrative. But the, the, the areas, I'm not going into an area that doesn't have the, 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 the right drivers to um, produce, you know, the, the returns that we're looking for. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a great point as well. And it just shows you, as you said, it just it just shows you that there's a lot more there if you care to look for it, um, as opposed to just passing on things because, well, it looks a little bit more difficult than maybe going over here, but it may not have the same return. It may not have the same societal impact as as it would if you go over, take the easy option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, this is great, Yusuf. Um, but uh, before we go, um, please do tell people a little bit more about your company and, and what you do. Well, Real Estate Asset Partners is 
um, a commercial real estate, multifamily real estate deal shop. And, you know, we've vertically integrated ourselves to, to add value to properties and in, in different locations. Usually, um, you know, we, we like to do things in the, in the Southeast or the Sun Belt, but I happen to have uh, a footprint or a influence on, on, in Los Angeles where I live, but also, you know, in looking in Texas and, and we're very, very, very active in Georgia. So, you know, any of those areas are comfortable for us to do deals. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, the market right now is, is pretty interesting and, you know, we're still, we're still finding some stuff, but, but um, you know, we just, right. I'm at my, I'm at the point of my career where we, if it's a fit, you know, we'll choose a property. If it's a fit, we'll choose a partner, if a capital source, if it's a fit, we'll choose, you know, like you said, uh, you know, if, if this fits our purpose. So, you know, thank, thank goodness that, you know, 20 some odd years ago, 25, 26 years ago, things worked out. And uh, now we're looking for, you know, just things that fit. Yeah, listen, it's great. And it's a great story, uh, Yusuf, and congratulations to you and the team. Uh, all of you for information and the links to real estate asset partners and all of that good stuff will be below this video. Uh, thanks again, Yusuf, for sharing your story with us. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.